Has anyone here heard of the Wealth of Nations? Of course. Let's pray. Let's go for 12 to 15. Wealth of Nations, it was actually published in 1776, the same year as the birth of America. And America is successful as it is today because we base our entire economy on making money, preserving the rights to retain money, and paying our fair share in taxes. We have a government that doesn't always believe in these principles because we're democracy. And the people that form the democracy get to push for their opinion of how our society should be based. My goal tonight is to talk to you about some basic economics. When I went to college, I paid a lot of my, well, fairly, my father paid a lot of money for me to get an economics degree. I am going to try and give you the one most important economics piece of information that I learned while I was in college and try and save you having to go through that whole loan process. Because once you get this one big idea, you spend the next three and a half years talking about the other half of economics. Well, you learn half of it just based on what Adam Smith had to say in The Wealth of Nations. This might be a little bit dry, but it is being filmed. So if you don't understand it the first time, you'll be able to go back and see it again and again and again, as many times as you'd like. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> but the jokes don't get better the second, third, or fourth time. So anyways, I have a graph here. I passed out a copy to all of you. This is a supply and demand graph. This is one of the very first things that's taught in Economics 101. lot of different things up on this side of the graph and a lot of different things on this side. The one that I chose is wage per hour for the graph as it goes up. And the one that's on the bottom is number of people. So let's take a look at what this means. This is the demand curve here. And at a high wage, you have fewer number of people that this business can afford to pay this high wage. So if you look on the left at W15, and you look at P15 down below, you'll see that the number of people is small at this high wage. That's because there's only a certain number of businesses that can pay you that much money and still stay in business. I have used an example, Mr. A's. Think of Mr. A's, the restaurant. They serve a very expensive meal, it includes wine. It's at a very high rent district. They can stay in business even if the wages go up because they have all of that money they make from selling wine. Okay? Then if you go further down this graph, you see BVDs. Now, this has nothing to do with our BVD. This is Bob's Vegetarian Delicatessen. It's just a coincidence. Okay? Now, BVD gets to sell beer. So he can still afford to pay people a higher wage and still stay in business. Then you go down further and you get to Chuck Wagon. Chuck Wagon has a hard time staying in business when the wage goes above $7 an hour. Now you might say, well hold on, aren't we already at a minimum wage of $10 an hour that we have to pay all of our laborers? Yes, and that's why Chuck Wagon is out of business. And Chuck Wagon starts with a C to make it easy for me to go through here. But another good example is Hometown Buffet, which just went out of business and went bankrupt. They're in the same business as Chuck Wagon. So if you like that type of food and wonder why you don't get to have it anymore, you know who to blame. A minimum wage that's at $10 an hour instead of what would probably be the equilibrium wage, which would be about $7 an hour. Now, how do I know that $7 an hour is where the market would end up. I know that because there's a lot of illegal aliens here in San Diego and they do get employed at lower wages. They get employed by businesses that can't pay $10 an hour, can't pay their taxes, and so they operate in the sidelines where they can pay a lower wage. And there's other businesses that, don't, that aren't part of the normal taxing system. There's nannies who get paid a little bit less. There's people who babysit who get paid less. When I was growing up, 
I didn't get paid a wage by an employer. I went out and started my own small little business in which I mowed lawns. I made four or five dollars an hour. So there are ways to try and go into business for yourself, make a little bit less money, but once you start actually uh, having to pay that minimum wage, you have to have workers who are that productive or better in order to keep them employed. And this is a big misunderstanding. I remember I once talked to one of my secretaries and she came in and said, well, I deserve a, work, a wage. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's look at what you're doing here. If, I, if, you're, if I'm paying you $10 an hour now and you demand a wage, let's just be ridiculous about it. Let's say you want $20 an hour. Is your productivity going to double from today till tomorrow? Are you going to be doing twice as much work? Are you going to be having twice as many hours? Are you going to be doing twice as good? Are, if you're on commission, are you going to be making twice as many dollars? I don't think so. So the wage that I pay you has to be commensurate with the value you bring to the organization. And if you only bring in $10 an hour worth of income to me, I can't afford to hire you. I need you to make $20 worth because I have to pay you 10 I have to pay taxes of three or four dollars on top of that. I have to pay for rent. I have to pay for a car. I have to pay for phones. And I have to have some reason to stay in business. So you need to produce $20 an hour worth of work for me to afford to be able to pay you 10. So if you want to go from 10 to 12, you need to work from 20 to 22. And then I get nothing out of it. So preferably you'd go from 22 to 24 so we can both benefit from me paying you a higher wage. And she got so offended when I tried to explain this to her because she thought that if she was making $24 an hour worth of income to the business, she deserved the whole thing. But that's not the way economics works, and that's the point of this graph. So let's take one of these points. Let's look at, at the equilibrium wage first, where Chuck Wagon, BVD, and Mr. A are all in business. Now, if you look at WE, that's the wage equilibrium, which I put in at about seven bucks an hour, and you look at the number of people who are willing to work at that wage, you will see that everybody who wants to work at that wage is employed. You have Andy who's employed, Brady who's employed, and Charlie who's employed. You have businesses that are willing to pay that wage, which are Mr. A, BVD, and Chuck Wagon. And there's no waste. Now, what is the economic value that these owners get from paying $7 an hour? That's what this blue triangle represents. Mr. A would be willing to hire people at $16 an hour, but he only pays 7 So all of this benefit goes to him. Meanwhile, Andy would be willing to work at $3 an hour, but he's getting 7 So all of this benefit goes to Andy. Both parties are benefiting. You say, well, why is Andy willing to work $3 an hour? He's living at his parents' house. He doesn't have as many bills to pay. He uses it's a trainer job for him. He'd be willing to take any job at all. He's a little slow. He doesn't know very much. He knows that he's got to get an initial job before he can work up to the point where he wants $5 an hour, where Brady is. Brady's been in the workforce three or four more years than Andy. He's three or four years older. He's got more bills. He's got to pay for a bicycle. He's got to pay for his iPhone. He's got to pay for, for his Xbox. He can't afford work for $3. He'd work for five, but he gets seven. He gets seven, he'd be willing to work for five. That's the additional value, the marginal utility that he gets from being employed. Then you go up to Charlie. Charlie has, hasn't moved out of the house yet. He can still afford to work at $6 an hour, but he gets 7 So he gets a smaller value. And Chuck Wagon would afford to pay him $9 an hour, but they're only paying 7 So Chuck Wagon can afford to keep Charlie employed. And we're not paying welfare benefits for Charlie, Brady, or Andy. And Chuck Wagon hasn't gone out of business. And anyone who likes eating a Chuck Wagon has that as a benefit. Now let's look at Daniel. Daniel is either a tougher negotiator or he thinks he's worth more money. He refuses to go to work unless he gets $8 an hour. 
Well, Andy, Brady, and Charlie are all working for seven, so Daniel doesn't have a job. Daniel could be lazy, or he could be a tough negotiator. He could be getting welfare benefits. We don't really know, but Daniel's out of a job over here. Now, what happens when the government steps in and says, we want to redo the redistribution of income? We want to mandate that now, instead of $7 where it could be, you have to pay a minimum of 10 which is the way California is, I think, this very minute, but it's going to go up to 15 So turn to the second page. And this is great. Over here in the second page, you'll see in yellow, wage 10, $10 an hour. And over here, you see the number of people who are willing to work at when the wage is $10 an hour. Andy, this is the same graph that was on the previous page. We just have a different minimum wage that has to be paid. So now you see that what the value that these workers get has shrunk. It used to, well, it's, it's bigger here in this area and AC and BC, but they no longer get CD. So the, the welfare of Andy and Brady has gone up. Both of them get more money than they were making before at seven. But that money is a redistribution from what the owners used to make. Mr. A's and BVD lost this money. It's a pure income redistribution to their employees, which is what, why government does it, which is why it's popular, because there's more Andes and Brady's than there are Mr. A's and BVD's. So when they try and win votes, they can go and win votes by redistributing money from those who make money and employ people to their employees. But that's not the end of the story. What happened to Chuckwagon? Chuckwagon is now out of business. Chuckwagon is out of business, and Charlie is unemployed. Charlie, who used to work at Chuckwagon, is unemployed now. And he can't go take Brady or Andy's job because Andy and Brady are still working. So he's got to wait in line until Andy or Brady decides they don't want to work. And then maybe he can go get a job. Daniel's still out of work. So what does Chuck, who owns Chuck Wagon, do? He's got to go find a different business. He can go to Mr. A and he could say, I'd like to come work for you as one of your employees. He'd say, well, that's great. Get in line behind Andy. Andy already has that job. Until Andy decides to quit, I can't give it to you. He can go over to BVDs and say, I'm willing to work for you, Bob. And Bob said, well, get behind Brady. Brady's already got that job. When he quits, I'll give you a chance. You'll make a lot less money. So Chuck says, what do I do? I, can, I have to go into a different business. I can't be in the food business anymore. I have to go into a business where I can afford to pay people over $10 an hour and still stay employed. I'm going to have to become a computer programmer. I don't know anything about computer programming, but hopefully Chuck saved a bunch of money so that when he's unemployed, he can go train himself to do a different job because that's his only alternative. His only alternative is to go find a job where if he wants to be a, a person who's in charge of others, if he wants to own his own business, he can no longer do it in this industry. And Charlie, we're now paying welfare benefits on. So this is the way the system is today. And what is the, the blue... This blue triangle is smaller than the blue triangle on the previous page. This orange triangle is a little bit better, which is why you get so many votes when the Democrats put this into office. What does the yellow triangle represent? Lost. Lost in <coughs> lost utility. Utility that's lost both for the employees, with Charlie being unemployed, and for the owners of the business. Chuck a chuck wagon. So now what happens? So now they want to win more votes. So now turn to the third page. And on the third page, they have jacked up the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Now this is great for Andy. Andy's been, Andy's now making a killing. Andy loves how much money Andy is making 
working as an employee of Mr. Ray's. But Brady, who used to be employed at Bob's, he's out of business. He's on welfare now, too, or he's trying to find somebody who will hire him. He's hoping that Chuck and Bob go start a, start a new company where they can pay higher wages so that they can go back and, and, and earn a living. But they don't know how to do computer programming. They don't know how to be in construction. They don't, so they're going to have to train themselves, too. And while they're trying to get trained, what does this huge yellow triangle represent? People who want to work and people who want to employ those who want to work who can't because the government has told them they can't. That's the basics of economics. That is it, right there in a nutshell. That's the first six months of what you learn and 50% of what's in value of an economics degree. It's not that tough. It's very simple. We've got some complicated graphs here, but you guys know as business owners how it works. You can't just go and raise your prices. Now, some people might say, well, what if Bob just raises his price? Maybe he tries to move into Mr. A's territory. He raises his price. Let's take an example. Let's say Bob is making, let's say, a million dollars a year in income, of, of gross income. 333000 of that, a third of it, is wages that he pays his employees. A third of it is the value of the merchandise he sells, all of his delicatessen materials. And then there's some overhead, so out of that $1 million, Bob makes 100000 Now, what happens when the wage goes from $10 to $15 an hour? The $333,000 he used to pay for wages now goes to $500,000. Remember, Bob was only making $100,000 before. If the wages go up $166,000 and Bob was only making $100,000, Bob now has to pay $66,000 to come to work each year. Do you think he's going to do that? No, he's not. He's going to go out of business. So he says, okay, well, let's do this. Let's try and move into Mr. A's territory. I'm going to put a 25% increase on everything I sell, on all my hamburgers, on all my, my shakes, on all of my beer, on everything. I'm going to increase it by 25%. Now, is the customer going to come in and pay 25%? If they were willing to do that before, Bob would have already increased his prices by 25%. He would have extracted the most money he could because that's what the profit motive is all about. He can't do that. And that's the problem with basic economics. It's not explained to people. Now, granted, I had to take 15 minutes to explain it to you guys, but now you understand it. And I did give these to you so you can go explain it to your children because they are going to outvote you. That's why a third of this country thinks Bernie is great because they don't understand this one simple concept that has never been explained to them in which they don't have a 15 minute attention span to figure out on their own and because they don't have a coach to tell them how it works. Mr. Toastmaster.